What up, y'all? It's your boy Gangsta Gangsta back at you again. What up? Out here in uh, Rome, Georgia. Um, I picked up a little old down there in um, Savannah. Actually, I was going to dead head home from Savannah. Um, but some agent called me up and, um, Ella, pay me to go home. All right, let's do that. Get me closer to the house because I came out from Houston. But long story short, um, watch the video to the end. Um, I interviewed a heavy haul truck driver. Um, Trucker 2 Chain, what up, what up, what up? Long story short, um, after me and him, um, I shake his hand, um, say 2 Chain out. I did a quick video of his um, trail and then I closed out the interview. So make sure y'all watch it to the end. Hey, y'all stay safe out there and I'll holler. Hope you what up, y'all? It's your boy Gangsta Gangsta G-Way out here with Trucker 2 Chain. <laughs> uh, let's, let's take a look at what he got back here. He's a heavy haul driver. Um, I saw him across the way and I had to come over here and talk to him. You like to speak to the folks? Hello. <laughs> I've never talked on anybody else's channel, so I don't even know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I done interviewed quite a few, um, but um, I, I'm really interested in this heavy haul thing. And the first thing that came to mind was to ask you, you know, how you balance out your weight and everything with the tire. and he. He raffled it off. How long have you been doing this, man? It'll, it'll surprise you, but I've only been at this for, I'm going up to my third year. Oh, wow. And I actually started off, um, I don't know if I should say, but mm -hmm. I used to drive for Swift. Uh, I used to be an owner operator at Swift. I, I started at Swift. Yeah, that's good. So we out here tearing it up. Yeah, yeah, running yeah. Running yeah. stuff, bouncing off the people. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I drove for Swift for eight and a half years as an owner operator. and. Uh, when I got out of that, I wanted to do something different and get into this heavy haul stuff. Ooh. And these guys, I called up Valley, uh, mm -hmm. and man, it was, uh, it was almost like Cinderella putting on that slipper. Like it, it just fit. Uh, and I started off on a step deck and I worked my way up fairly quickly. Um, I went through a five axle RGN, six axle, seven axle deck, eight axle beam. I was on that for a while. I went to nine axle, the trailer had an issue. I went to nine axle deck for a little while. And I'm actually just now back on beam for the last, I'd say 10 loads or so. So I'm still actually getting used to it. Oh, okay. Um, you know, burning off that vacation fat. Oh, and, uh, man. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, everything goes pretty smooth. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm having a blast. These guys treat me super good. Um, you know, I don't have a complaint. Um, you know, it's really so pretty much with a setup like this, let's uh, look at this. We got a few axles back here. Yeah, I got more than I know what to do with. <laughs> They're going over there. Uh, um, watch them, I'm sitting in my rig, I'm waiting to get unloaded. And I watched him um, detach and he went and got this huge piece of equipment and he brought it back over and he was measuring it out. And I'm saying to myself, how do you balance out that weight? And um, yeah. So what I do is, since I picked one of these up, let's see if I can. There yeah. we go. All right. What I do is, since I've got tandem, tandem, and tandem, tandem, I split the machine in half. And generally speaking, halfway or behind the seat is where your center of gravity of the machine is. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit further back, so I move the machine four feet six inches forward, and then. When I pick it up, when I pick the machine up and get all attached, I'll check my weights, and then if I have to move it, I'll do it. Where are your weights located at? So I got a gauge on the back, an air gauge. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, I saw you down in there messing with some air compressor or something. I didn't know what it was. So <laughs> I get, listen, I get excited, you know? Like, mm. uh, you have an extra bowl of Cheerios, you get some sugar in you. Uh -huh. and so I did the pins backwards. I should have left the pins in to put my booster. So um, I had to go back and redo something right quick. But so here's my gauge. And then, you know, once I get weight on it, that'll go up to 60 PSI, give or take. Mm. And then that's about where I want to be, 19,000 per axle. That'll keep me under 40 for the tandem. And then mm -hmm. if I have to adjust anything, I'll just let the air out of the, once I get it built up, I'll let the air out and then I'll move the trailer forward or back just a little bit oh wow you know what i mean and then that way i'll adjust the weight farther forward or back so when i pick it up the next time it'll be centered that way oh and then, okay um i don't know where i put my tape measure but so then when you're sitting in the cab 
Mm -hmm. I usually have a tape measure sitting right here, and I'll have it to, and you know, I measure the width and all that stuff. Right. So I had 19 inches from outside of the beam to the inside of the track. If I get this track to night, you know, to the tape measure, mm -hmm. you know, I know I'm pretty straight, so I'm pretty uh, even centered side on to right. Side. So now I'm just going to take this piece of wood and I'll put it up under there and put one in the front, and then I'll air up the trailer. And it'll this will pick the machine up, you know. Then I'll move the wood out of the way so when I set the trailer back down at ride height, uh -huh. right? Then I'll hook up the trailer and all that and air it up and I'll check my weights. And then if I got to move it, I'll raise the trailer back up, put the, the wood up underneath there, and then that's how I move the machine back and forth. Oh, okay, okay. R roughly, what does this machine here weigh? This bad boy is 101,000 pounds, 101,475 pounds. Wow, so 102. What's the heaviest you to haul? So I picked up 120,000 listed as 120. It was probably 121 or something. Mm. You know, off the record. <laughs> Not that I'm being recorded or anything. <laughs> uh, you know, but we move wood. We get, a, you know, we get a 2,000 pound dunnage allowance, and you know, we can kind of, you know, play I'll, with it. I'll drop fuel. You know, I'll just burn fuel off, or you know, I'll only keep a half a tank. And, you know, we can kind of goof off a little bit. And then some states we get permitted for, we can go all up to 44,000 mm. on tandem. So, I mean, we can, you know, we can carry a few. Yeah, Texas is a pretty good state, and um, Tennessee is a pretty good state, too. Arkansas, oh, shit, Kentucky, no. <laughs> yeah, one of, the things, one of the things that I'm, you know, having to get used to is when we're empty, our kingpin is more than 40 foot. And in the state of Tennessee, we have to have an unladen permit to drive through, just like California. Oh, wow. Now, California doesn't bug us. Mm -hmm. But Tennessee, you go through a scale. I want to say it's a hundred and forty some dollar ticket. So wow, you want to you want to call up your dispatcher for a, a you know well us. I don't know you know I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm just talking about me my trailer. I gotta have a permit. Right, right, right. Oh man, uh, but uh, generally speaking, it takes about. Well, I mean, this is a pretty long process. That, you know, we're messing around, but um, generally, if I got here and everything was going really good probably two hours that was my next question to you how long you usually play with stuff before you even get on the road because now you got to wait on your escorts before you get on the road right and permit so i get an i see i get an idea of what's going to be height and width and i know the width so i have all that printed out so here in a few minutes i'll just hit send and i'll send that out to scott what's up scott and uh, <laughs> he's a real good guy he takes care of me mm. um, and i'll send all that off and i'll get the permit back probably you know an hour maybe two hours and then i've already asked for my uh, pilot car so you know it'll all come together and then if not because of the trailer size we just we can drop up there if, you know if something goes on where we can't get cars and permits mm -hmm. we'll just drop the trailer and then we'll bobtail out you know oh okay until you get, get everything shower and, you know get get cleaned up where tomorrow i just pull in and connect and go you know yeah. what i mean how um how far are you taking this this is going to Indianapolis. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay. That, when I was telling you about that forklift, which, by the way, Trucker2Chains.com and Trucker2Chains on YouTube, I just put a video up with the forklift that we did that we picked up in Los Angeles, California, and we drove it all the way to Brooklyn, New York. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You're talking about the Brooklyn Star. I know you bought, came all the way out from L.A. Wow. Yeah. And wow. I didn't... Um, I used to do some recording driving, but I kind of got away from that just because of the, you know, regulations and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. be careful nowadays. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but you know, we could do some time lapses or something. But you know, I I didn't do any kind of video about that. But I did do a video of it loading and all. You know, so you know, check out the channel, check out the website, um, uh, TikTok. I got a truck. You got a TikTok. On TikTok. And, yeah, I thought about trying to do that. I thought about trying to uh, TikTok. Nowadays. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, well, I appreciate the interview, sir. And hey, y'all, please go subscribe to this main channel. He's very knowledgeable. And um, sort of. all right. Hey, y'all, have a great one, Gangsta G out. Truck to James. Mm, I'm out. <laughs>
What's your total length? Long enough to go to the prom. <laughs> I mean, uh, 100 and not, right now I'm sitting at 109, 109 feet, two inches. But I'm at usually 109.5, uh, all the way to one, 110 if I need to adjust some stuff. And that banging was the, uh, the walking beam pin, or the walking beam settling. Mm. I don't know what, sometimes it, what's funny is when there's a crane operator around uh, and we're all just talking, sometimes the air will leak out a little bit or whatever, and also they go, bang, uh, woo! <laughs> Last question, I know you got to get back to work. Um, driving all this different type of equipment, do they train you for that or you just jump in and have to learn yourself? Um, yeah, we have a complete training schedule, uh, uh well, <laughs> once you draw one, you pretty much got the concept. Of if the I have stuff. a question, I can call somebody, or I have people that I can call. There's a great net network at Valley, other drivers, and, um, I, my dispatcher is actually an, he used to drive an 11 axle truck for us, so that is beyond awesome when you have somebody that has experience that you can make a phone call to and say I'm going through this area oh yeah take make sure you take that right and swing it wide you know what I mean like it, it's really good All but as right. far as the equipment um, most of the equipment nowadays is pictures you know what I mean mm -hmm. they gotta dumb it down a little bit yeah uh, the older equipment is interesting I got a couple of videos on picking up at Richie Brothers and I picked up a 1982 bulldozer don't even know what it is i don't even remember what it was right, right. and i was like <laughs> right a couple jumping jacks you know and then i couldn't even get it started so i was like well so i did a couple sit-ups and i moved some more levers and stuff and yeah it, okay. it's uh it's interesting oh okay hey but well, we ain't gonna bother this man no more wait by one more time hey i'm trucker two chains and i'm out <laughs>